Kevin Cork, and welcome as ESPN Classic presents a vintage college hoop showdown between Kentucky and LSU from 1991. Kentucky was 17 and 3 overall, ranked number 10 in the country. Now, they were ineligible for postseason play because of recruiting violations under previous head coach Eddie Sutton. Rick Pitino's team, meantime, featured Reggie Hansen, John Pelfrey, and freshman Jamal Mashburn. Meanwhile, LSU came into the game with a 13-6 and six mark, and they featured the incomparable Shaquille O'Neal. As a sophomore, Shaq led the Tigers with 27 points and 15 rebounds a game. Here's your chance to see the daddy in college. During the game, we'll look back at Shaq's prolific collegiate career and take a trip down memory lane with 1991's biggest songs, movies, and TV shows. But for now, let's take you up to Baton Rouge. It's Kentucky and LSU from 1991 right here on ESPN Classic. Welcome to game two of Big 8 SEC Tuesday, and it doesn't get any bigger in the SEC than the Wildcats and the Tigers of LSU. Better than 15,000 on hand here at the Pete Maravich Assembly Center in Baton Rouge, and we are ready now for the starting lineups, and with them, public address announcer Dan Bournet. This is Dan Bournet. On behalf of Louisiana State University and the LSU Athletic Department, welcome to the Pete Maravich Assembly Center for tonight's Southeastern Conference basketball game between the Wildcats of the University of Kentucky and your Fighting Tigers of LSU. Now, here are the starting lineups for tonight's game for the Wildcats. At one guard, a 6'2 junior from Indianapolis, number 11, Sean Woods. At the other guard, a 6'5 sophomore from Houston, number 14, Jeff Brasso. At center, a 6'7 senior from Somerset, Kentucky, number 35, Reggie Hansen. At one forward, a 6'8 freshman from New York City, number 24, Jamal Mashburn. And at the other forward, a 6'7 junior from Paintsville, Kentucky, number 34, John Pelfrey. Now, ladies and gentlemen, direct your attention to the ceiling of the Pete Maravich Assembly Center and welcome Mike the Tiger. Now, here are the starting lineup for the Fighting Tigers of LSU. At one guard, a six-foot junior from Baton Rouge, number 20, T.J. Pugh. At the other guard, a 6'1 sophomore from Madrid, Spain, number 11, Mike Hansen. At center, a 7-1 sophomore from San Antonio, Texas, number 33, Shaquille O'Neal. At one forward, a 6-6 sophomore from Faraday, number 22, Sean Briggs. And at the other forward, a 6-7 junior from Natchez, number 24, Bonell Singleton. We have to tell you that there's some debris on the floor because of the celebration prior to the start of the game. I mean, it is literally fire and ice out here tonight. Kentucky leads this series, and of course, they lead every series in the SEC. The Baron, Adolph Rupp, due in large part to that, and Joe B. Hall. LSU has won 35 of 39 home games. They recently had their streak come to an end with Mississippi State when they got that victory here at LSU last week. One of three losses in their last four outings for the Tigers, the most recent of which occurred at Vanderbilt. The opening tap is controlled to LSU. Sean Griggs will push it up, and he turns it over. And one of the things that Kentucky will do to you, Tim, is give you that pressure, Kentucky creates a lot of turnovers and they get some easy baskets from those turnovers and right there the initial double team really caused a problem for Greg. Man to man defense for LSU. 
Mashburn and the monster mash opens with a three. He is devastating inside, but when he moves outside, he becomes even better. Hanson's shot won't fall. O'Neal will go back up again and draw the foul from Pelfrey. Well, if you're the Kentucky Wildcats, the one guy you got to find to block out is Shaquille O'Neal, and nobody gets him. He's right underneath the basket. Hanson misses. You can see the power of Shaquille O'Neal as he drives it in the basket. Hanson has not been shooting the ball very well. As he misses it, O'Neal is right there. Mashburn's got to get him away from the basket. We're tied at three. 30 seconds gone here at the Deaf Dome in Baton Rouge. Well, it's the Deaf Dome, and you're going to have a problem seeing in here tonight. This place is full of smoke. <laughs> Inside, Hanson, too strong, retrieved by O'Neal. Well, it, it may not be the Thomas and Mack Center in Las Vegas, but for a while it appeared that way. <laughs> Dale Brown pulling out all stops to get a motion on his side for this game against the Big Blue. Bad pass by O'Neal, and Pelfrey comes away with it for Kentucky. That's good defense by Kentucky. Mashburn. O'Neal with a rejection. The outlet to Griggs. Out of bounds. Woods knocked it free. It will be controlled to the Tigers underneath their own hoop. Rick Patino, 38 years young, the youngest coach in the Southeastern Conference. 14 and 14 a year ago. You know the numbers from this season. SEC Coach of the Year in his first year in Lexington. Again, O'Neal with an errant pass. Woods will run the break to Reggie Hanson, and Singleton clears for LSU. Both teams obviously want to get the ball out on the break. LSU really trying to force it inside to O'Neal. They have not been very successful. That's four turnovers. Protecting the ball has been a problem for LSU in recent weeks. Pelfrey. Off the front iron. O'Neal again with the baseball pass. Count them. That's five. That's a handful of turnovers. And we haven't played two minutes in Baton Rouge for LSU. Hell free. And you could see well, O'Neal change that shot. O'Neal is, he hasn't blocked one yet, but he has caused a couple of misses. Two by Hanson, now one by Pelfrey and one by Brasso. The big guy can certainly intimidate you inside. The bounce pass to Singleton down on the baseline. Good work by Hanson to find Vernell Singleton, who during the slump has played well for Dale Brown. It really has been all O'Neal and Singleton. Hugh and Hanson and Griggs have been slumping. Pelfrey. Griggs gets up and gets the rebound for the Tigers. Kentucky off to a very slow shooting start in the ballgame. Shaquille counted and a foul. Now, once again, Jamal Mashburn is matched up against Shaquille O'Neal, and I'll tell you what, he's got to find that guy. And Shaquille out on a basketball court has to be hard to lose, if you ask me, Tim. Mashburn, suddenly you can see him in the back of your picture there, start to realize that O'Neal's in front of him on the way to the basket. Shaquille starts out behind, but then just beats Mashburn down the court, and Rick Pitino's really upset. O'Neal, obviously a big game for him, though he usually keeps it all in perspective. He has been the focal point of much attention off of the floor as well as on this past week with the events in Nashville and the comments from his father in the newspapers that he might opt to go pro. Braddy. Singleton has it knocked away by Mashburn. Woods high arching off the glass. And Woods is going to get a foul, and I think that's the key, Tim. High arching off the glass. Those fellas don't know whether O'Neal's there or not, and it looks to me like every shot they shoot is with Shaquille in the back of their mind. To further document that O'Neal situation, Sergeant Philip Harrison in San Antonio spoke with a local writer, Lee Feinswag, here of the morning advocate in Baton Rouge, and said if the fouling of his son continued, he may out to go pro, although he has steadfastly said he would stay in school for four years. But if he continues to be fouled, he may have to go to the NBA. There's O'Neal down deep, right over Mashburn. Not much more that man can do. Mashburn needs some help if Shaquille's going to catch it that close to the basket. 9 3 Tigers. 
Mashburn, a collective 0 for 3 since that first three-pointer to start the game. Pugh drives past Braddy. Mashburn clears for Kentucky. Hanson. Kentucky will push, 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 and create three shots. Tim, as is the case many times when you have a game that has had this much intensity leading up to it, it's been rather a sloppy game to start out so far. And what we have a stoppage of play here, somebody threw something on the court. These fans are really wound up, and sometimes that's not a very good idea. You like to see the intensity and the, the collegiate atmosphere, but you don't want it to get out of hand. Hugh drives and finds Griggs. And Griggs walked, I do believe. Yes, that's the call against Sean Griggs. Another turnover for LSU, Kentucky. Not shooting the ball well. You can see two of 11, but it's those turnovers by LSU that is keeping Kentucky in the ball game at this point. Harold Boudreaux will come into the game. Clearly a better offensive player, but Griggs desperately needed for defense from Dale Brown. Dale Brown, prior to the Tennessee game, talked of the role players he had on this club. It all appeared to be coming together. Since that Tennessee loss, they have lost their fluidity. Feldhaus. Check that. John Pelfrey with the hoop. That's good pressure by Kentucky. They get the ball into Pew, and now Pew's going to beat Braddy, which is not what Kentucky wants defensively. Hanson. That may be big, because he has been slumping the last two games, as you documented at the top of the telecast. And Hanson picks up the foul on the other end. There has been some conversation, Dan, that his working to get the ball has been a problem on the offensive end. Well, his problem that time was on the defensive end, Tim, as Woods just flat beat him to the basket. LSU has a five-point lead at home in the Deaf Dome. Watching a vintage showdown between Kentucky and LSU from 1991, featuring Shaquille O'Neal and Jamal Mashburn, right here on ESPN Classic. Prior to Dale Brown's coming to LSU, the last Final Four LSU had appeared in was that man's back in the 50s, Bob Pettit. What a tremendous player he was here in Baton Rouge. Not only in Baton Rouge, but then in the NBA, particularly with the St. Louis Hawks. He, he knew basketball before basketball was cool down here. <laughs> You've been practicing that for how long? Man-to-man <laughs> -man defense by LSU. You can see LSU trying to really get out and defend the three. Oh. Mashburn rejected by O'Neal. That's one for Shaq on the defensive end. And Shaq is beating Mashburn up the court again, and Mashburn fouls it. That's at least twice in this game, Tim, where O'Neal has just flat beat Mashburn up the basketball court. Jamal picks up his first. Mashburn hit that first three-point shot of the game, Tim, and then he's missed a couple. And so the last time he decides he's going to put it on the deck and he's going to go by O'Neal, but O'Neal's an awful tough guy to get around. You may be able to beat Shaq at the top of the key, and you can see here that Mashburn does beat him, but Shaq, just a couple of steps, he's recovered. That big hand comes over there, knocks the ball away nicely. He hits the second free throw. 13 to 7, LSU's lead is 6, just underway. First half, we hope you enjoyed the first half of Big Eddie SEC Tuesday. Kansas State at home in Manhattan with a win over Oklahoma. Notice Shaq is staying in the lane area. So he can be a threat. Griggs, who leads the SEC and steals, comes up with one right there. And that's why he has to be in the lineup for LSU. But then again, on the other end, that can occur. He creates a turnover and then causes one on the offensive end. Woods gets past Sean Griggs, and it's 13 to 9. Woods is so strong going to his left that just about everybody tries to force him to his right. And so you know that's what LSU is doing. Hanson just wasn't able to get it done. There's an offensive foul against Singleton. Attention honorably discharged U.S. veterans and spill down between Kentucky and LSU from 1991 featuring Shaquille O'Neal and Jamal Mashburn right here on ESPN Classic. They have gotten the block. Yep, you're right. It was an offensive foul. Dale Brown will argue it for a moment. Mickey Crowley, Gerald Boudreaux. Two of our officials tonight, Frank Scagliata, the other. 
Dale Brown telling his team to calm down. There you can see nine LSU turnovers, so Kentucky hasn't been able to shoot the ball, but LSU hadn't been able to hang on to it. Well, Briggs got Griggs there for it, and that's an obvious foul. Griggs is working so hard against Pelfrey, and I really think that's a good idea. If you can cut off Pelfrey, you can really hurt Kentucky. Pelfrey is moving extremely well without the ball. Griggs is trying to follow him. You see him coming off the screen on the top. Good fake by Pelfrey, taking it into the lane. Pelfrey's one fellow who doesn't seem to be intimidated by O'Neill. Griggs to sit down. That was a long three-point shot. And it was ugly. Mashburn with a nice rebound on the offensive end. Kentucky holds on. Junior Braddy has come into the game, number 23 in blue. Mashburn again will pump. Boudreaux finally collects it for LSU. The alley-oop to Shaq. O'Neal with 10 of the Tigers' 15. And at times, he really is already in another league. Well, he certainly seems to have Mashburn confused early in the ballgame. Mashburn coming off a great game against Georgia. Just doesn't seem to be into the game. Ready. Nice rebound. The foul, the end result. Down low against Harold Boudreaux. Mashburn's a fellow that's going to keep working out there. He's not going to quit on you. He's had a rough first couple of minutes of the ball game, but he continues to battle in there. Braddy takes it up. Pugh gets a body on him. No call. And you can see Mashburn battles inside very hard. Good strength in there. And Braddy, just at the end of that replay, has the expression on his face looking at the official, wondering where the heck's the foul. John Piku coming into the game for LSU. T.J. Pugh to sit down. Piku number 12 in white. And Richie Farmer has come in for Kentucky. There's a steal by Boudreaux. That's a bad pass by him. And Boudreaux gets it done on the other end. 17 to 9. The Tiger lead of eight is the game's largest. Pelfrey fouled by Boudreaux. That will be a three-shot opportunity for John Pelfrey. And Dale Brown will quickly talk to Boudreaux, who may have been a little excited about the last transition. He may have been a little excited by the last transition, and one thing you have to do against Kentucky is to guard their threes. Here's the transition. That's Piku with the ball in the middle. Nice job to fill the lane by Boudreaux. He lays it in, and then he knows he's got to get back up the court and find Pelfrey. Pelfrey was wide open for the three. That's what they covered in practice. If you've got to defend those threes, he defended a little too aggressively. This is one of the most improved basketball players in the country. And of course, he was fouled on that three-point shot, so he's going to get a third. Seventeen to eleven, LSU by six. Once again, there's Boudreaux running on the break. LSU really doing a good job on the break. Kentucky is a team that's noted for creating easy opportunities, but it's LSU the last couple of possessions getting the easy one. O'Neal clears for the Tigers. Sims will come away with it. And he missed a wide open dunk and mark that down. Dale Brown's advice to his team to calm down is good advice. Hanson right over Shaq. Shaq is out against Feldhaus. Feldhaus, remember, in the last game, ripped LSU for 27 points, most of them from three-point range. Shaq was out covering him, and Hanson's able to get to the basket. Tigers commit their 10th turnover, and we haven't played eight minutes of the first half. Kentucky shooting poorly from the perimeter. You know that won't last forever. Feldhaus finds Brasso for three. That's a great play by Feldhaus to create the open three-pointer for his teammate. The fake got O'Neal out of the way as he penetrated the defense game to help. You've got to get out and cover Kentucky's three. Piku, another turnover. Not aware of Farmer on his hip. Feldhaus gets the jam. 19 to 18. Eight minutes deep into the first half. And you're right, it has been an ugly first eight minutes, Dan. Brasso picks up the foul. 
Kentucky, as we said before the ball game, as you get a look there at Rick Martino, feeling under the weather, can come at you from so many different directions, and they're showing that here early in the game. LSU by one. They are playing above the rim tonight at LSU. In three-year career at LSU, he ranks fourth in school history with 1,941 points and second on the all-time list with 1,217 rebounds. But who's counting? He was a first-team All-American and SEC Player of the Year in both his sophomore and junior years. In his sophomore season, O'Neal won the Rupp Trophy as the AP's National Player of the Year. He also led LSU to three consecutive NCAA tournaments. Despite Shaq's efforts, the Tigers never advanced beyond the second round. He left school after his junior season and was the first overall pick in the 1992 NBA draft by the Orlando Magic. Your chance to see Shaq in college as LSU takes on Kentucky right here on ESPN Classic. No place like Def Dome. And they are loud tonight. And of course, as we mentioned, it's Def Dome. It's pretty quiet. <laughs> Some things never now, change. Kentucky has had a nice little run here to get back in this ball game. LSU with 11 turnovers. Kentucky converting those 11 turnovers into 10 points. And there's another turnover. Turnover number 12. And here come the Wildcats again. This is really living dangerously if you're Dale Brown because you're committing turnovers while Kentucky is cold from three-point range, and they won't stay this cold forever. Kentucky has only shot 30% from the field, while LSU is 8 of 11. Mashburn for three. Way too strong. Woods to follow, and it's cleared by Boudreaux. That's Braddy with the rebound and the foul of him, but again, he Check looks that, like he's Braddy. hurrying in there just because he knows Shaq is around someplace. You're right. Boudreaux cleared, and there's a... You've got to keep O'Neal from getting that dribble and getting that one step closer to the basket. Shaq has the offensive skills to shoot that little jumper, but I think you've got to make him shoot it. Look at that Kentucky with 10 points off, off all of those turnovers. There's Mashburn working inside, is going to get fouled by Boudreaux. Well, we talked about the weapons that Kentucky has, and one of the weapons that they have is that aggressive, scrambling, pressing defense. And while they haven't shot the ball well, they have created some easy opportunities for themselves off the press. Rick Patino to go to his bench. As Farmer goes to the pine, along with Junior Braddy. Feldhouse back into the game. And Gert Hammock entering the game. The youngster from Dadon, the Netherlands who at a time this year, about three weeks ago, was a great help to that man, Shaquille O'Neal. Hammock's become sort of a cult figure here in Baton Rouge. <laughs> Mashburn gets the free throw. A collected one for seven for him from the floor, that one being the first three-pointer of the night. 21-20, LSU by one. 45 and counting in the first half from Baton Rouge. Tim Brando and Dan Bonner, happy to have you with us. Kentucky in the man-to-man -man defense. Making sure they find Hanson. Boudreaux is free. That's an air ball. Grasso recovers it. Pelfrey will run the break. Went into Never Never Land. Out of bounds to LSU. Pelfrey trying to do a little too much on the break. LSU got back well. Pelfrey was one on three, and when he went behind his back, there was some Bayou Bengals there to grab the ball. LSU in the first meeting between these two had trouble with Kentucky's press in the first half. That's a block against Mashburn. They have not had the same problem in their backcourt. They haven't protected the ball well in the front court. the Tiger guards. That's the reason for the dozen turnovers that Dale Brown's team has seen. They're trying to get the ball inside, and as they try to get the ball inside, Kentucky reacting very well defensively. That's personal foul number six against the Wildcats. Shaquille O'Neal will come back in. Hammock checks out. <laughs> you hear the crowd responding. Both really for Hammock and O'Neal. You're right. He has become a bit of a cult figure here. Well, Hanson's now matched up against O'Neal. That's no contest. That is no contest at all. Shaq just pushed him out of the way and laid it in. 
Now, I'll tell you what, every time Pelfrey runs by Shaq, Shaq gets a hip or a backside into him. We're going to get a foul against Hanson, but Pelfrey's really getting bounced in there by Shaquille O'Neal. And Dale Brown, who's been complaining about the fact that the officials are letting too much rough play against Shaq occur, had better hope that the officials weren't listening to him, because if they're watching Shaq tonight, they're going to find Pelfrey bouncing off that big guy's hips. Maybe we can get a look at what we're talking about. There's Shaq right in the middle of your screen, and Pelfrey's going to come. You see Shaq just stick his fanny out, and he hits Pelfrey going by. That's like a body punch. You get a bunch of those in the ball game, and eventually you're so bruised you can't run anymore. A devastating derriere, right? <laughs> they missed the free throws. Hugh comes away with the rebound and will run the break for LSU. Boudreaux baseline. Shaq takes him to the rack. Shaq is really running the court well, and Kentucky just has not been able to find him in transition and block him out. Seven of seven from the floor and eight rebounds to pick up the foul here. Well, it's hard to miss the kind of shots that Shaq's been getting, Tim. Here comes Pelfrey on the cut. Boom. <laughs> This is a great catch by Boudreaux. He misses the shot, but there's O'Neal. You can see Woods trying to get out of the way before he gets killed. You made an excellent point, though, about the officials watching the play inside. And you mentioned earlier at halftime of the first game that for years, coaches of players that are over seven feet have commented on the injustice of the foul difficulty that they run into. But in many cases, sometimes that be can become an emotional factor for a team, and it may have indeed become a problem for Shaquille O'Neal at the end of that game. Well, what was indeed a 50-50 call against Vanderbilt. And he got the technical. And O'Neal is playing as if he felt he was responsible for that loss at Nashville right now. Hanson tries for the call. Grasso gets it right back to Reggie for the slam. That's just great hustle. That's just great hustle by Grasso, who knocks that ball back to Hanson. Kentucky's problem is they haven't been able to get Shaquille O'Neal more than a foot away from the basket. And if Shaq's going to catch it in there, he's going to dunk it every time. 27-23. LSU's lead is four. O'Neal. Boy, he is unconscious. Kentucky certainly doesn't want to foul that shot, but that's the best shot in terms of Kentucky that Shaquille's been that Shaquille's taken. You can notice they're trying to throw the ball over the top. Shaq with his size just gets it. Now his shoes untied. This is as far away from the basket as Kentucky's been able to get him, and he's still able to hit that bank shot from about three feet, and down he goes. Shaq averaging better than 30 points a game at home, and certainly. With the kind of shots he's been getting tonight, he's well on his way to that kind of a ball game. He's got 20 already. We still got eight minutes, 36 seconds to play in this half. 20 of the 29 points. More importantly, he is letter perfect from the floor. Nine of nine from the floor so far. LSU as a team really not playing with much fluidity on the offensive end, but O'Neal right now carrying the club in many respects. Lanier Burns just picked up a personal foul on that Shaquille O'Neal miss. Tim, neither team is playing with much fluidity, but each team is playing with tremendous intensity. Not unexpected. This is a game that over the years hasn't always been pretty, but always exciting. And you get that many times, particularly in a game that everyone has been looking forward to for so long. And even before LSU experienced this particular slump, these two teams have been looking ahead to this game. And here's Martinez, who's at the free throw line. And Martinez has not been playing. Rick Pitino sort of had set it into an eight-man rotation, and Martinez would be the ninth. But we've got some foul trouble both for Hanson and for Mashburn. So Martinez in the basketball game. They're very high on him for the future, though. Jamel Martinez out of Miami. Singleton clears for LSU on the air ball. That's good defense by Hanson. Hanson for three. That was an ugly shot. 
Kentucky doing a nice job reacting back to Hanson. Feldhaus will drive. That was a good idea by Feldhaus. Martinez has to step to the basket. Bresso. Well, you got to get out on those guys. Sometimes it's hard. They're two or three steps beyond that three-point line, and you think mentally they're not going to shoot that ball. Martinez was in position for the charge. A oh, how did he no do that? Call, and Woods just does a Marcus Haynes act to the hoop. And then misses the layup. Out of bounds, control to Kentucky. That's the game in capsule right there, Tim. He gets through the double team at half court, misses the layup, then Hammock knocks the rebound out of bounds. LSU's lead is two. It's showdown between Kentucky and LSU from 1991, featuring Shaquille O'Neal and Jamal Mashburn, right here on ESPN Classic. Neil Brown embroiled in some controversy after the fact in Nashville, Tennessee. A television reporter in Nashville allegedly going after a story that filtered out to the parking lot in the wake of LSU's controversial loss to Vanderbilt. Still some discussion as to whether that will ever get to a courtroom. The television station in question saying that they had every right to cover that and that LSU security made certain or at least attempted to prohibit the photographer from having access to the incident as it occurred in Nashville, Tennessee. And of course, he has been the brunt of some criticism here at home, but this could be Dale Brown's Camelot. <laughs> he loves it when it's like this, and his team usually responds. You. Oh, the iron unkind to T.J. Pugh. Three on one break for Kentucky, but LSU doing a nice job getting back. Pelfrey. Singleton clears. One thing about Kentucky, they miss those three-pointers, but they'll keep firing them up there. There's four guys on O'Neal. Griggs draws the foul from Jamel Martinez. And Rick Pitino is very upset with his team defensively. When O'Neal gets the ball, I think he'd like to double-team him, but he doesn't want everybody on the team running over to O'Neal. And watch, watch everybody. There's four guys right there standing around Shaquille. There's the pass out to the top, and Singleton makes a nice pass inside to Griggs, who very nearly gets the opportunity at the three-point play. Lots of times you set up double teams, but very rarely do you see the old quadruple team. We asked Shaquille O'Neal, had anyone played him straight up man-to-man? -man? You see Gert Hammock coming in and O'Neal going to the end of the bench. He'll tie his shoelaces. He's had only one team, Georgia, for some time. Play. Even Arizona with that uh, triumvirate of tall folks that Lute Olsen has collapsed inside. Of course, it did not stop Shaquille in that particular game. Well, if you got three real tall guys, why not? Why try to guard him with one tall guy? That's right. 31-27, LSU's lead is four. They have only trailed once in the game when Mashburn hit the three to open it up. LSU doing some pretty good half-court defensive work right now. Kentucky extremely small, and that's one of the reasons why Brown can afford to get O'Neal out of the game. Shot clock has worked its way down beneath five. Feldhaus, yes, and a foul against Singleton. That's just a tremendous move by Feldhaus as the shot clock is working down. Sometimes people get in a panic situation, but Feldhaus knew how much time was left on the clock. Just makes a very aggressive move to the basket. Martinez, a little bit of panic there, as he knew the clock was running down, but this is a good place to go with the ball, and of course it helps that Shaq isn't in the game because Feldhaus knows that he has the opportunity to take it into the middle and then pivot to the basket. That's a very, very fine play. Aaron Feldhaus, another example of Patino's ability to get the most out of his player. He also has a nickname, and it's one you might expect. It's House. I told him that Patino comes from the East Coast. Condominiums are more popular. He didn't buy it. There's another foul against Kentucky on the inside. Martinez not doing a good job moving his feet and getting to the baseline. Miles Briggs going by. Jamel Martinez comes in with some heavy-duty credentials, though, Dan. I mean, he played well in a matchup against Ed O'Bannon in high school. And this is a young man that could fit very nicely because, as all Patino players seem to do, he passes the ball. 
extremely well. Passes the ball well, shoots the ball well, but one other thing you have to do to play in Rick Pitino's system is to have a great deal of stamina. And you can just look at him. He doesn't have the muscle definition, say, of a Feldhaus. He needs to put on some weight and gain some stamina. And Rick Pitino and the Kentucky staff think he's going to be an outstanding player. 32-30. That's a turnover. Pelfrey with the bounce pass delivery, not quite there to Darren Feldhaus. And you have to credit the defense of Griggs in that particular situation. Griggs has given Pelfrey all he wants to this point in the basketball game. Griggs forced that pass. Boy, how many times have we seen LSU try to force the issue around the paint area? I think that's key, Tim. That word is exactly correct, and you know that man right there is not very happy about it. His team is playing very aggressively. But you can see they've turned the ball over 14 times. And not against a Kentucky press in LSU's backcourt. It's always happening in the front court. One too many a pass for the Tigers. Junior Braddy has come back into the game. Feldhaus down on the blocks over Wayne Sim. Oh Fade away jump hook. 32-32 with five and a half remaining until half time. Sims, and here's a player since reinstated, could be a factor offensively around the top of the key. LSU has been in need of more offense outside, and Sims could bring that. Brasso launches, and he gets his second tray of the night. Kentucky takes the lead, 35-34. Here's Goudreau, walk. No, it's going to be called a foul. A foul against Braddy, who did not get back and get his feet set. And that's, that's something that I don't think you see too often against Kentucky, and that is they've had a number of fouls in this basketball game, but they just haven't been able to get their feet set with the other team attacking in transition. LSU has attacked in transition very well when they've been able to hang on to the basketball. Dan, if it appears that Rick Pitino is not as well choreographed as usual, I think it's for a reason. This is a guy that is coaching in some pain. You see Boudreaux's numbers. But he was ill last night. He talked to us well, shortly after having dinner, Was had a little bit of the flu before he had dinner, only got worse this morning, did not come to the shoot-around today. But he knew he was not going to miss this game. <laughs> He'd have to be pretty sick to miss this game. But normally we would see him all over the place. 35-35. He had difficulty keeping fluids down today, we understand as well. His the IV that he received during the afternoon hour. You see O'Neill trying to stay in the lane area. He wants to make sure he cuts off that lane area. Didn't really have his feet set that time. When he gets his feet set, he's almost got unlimited range, it appears. Martinez right over Shaquille O'Neal. And you wonder why people think he's going to be a player? No problem right there. And Kentucky's in the lead. 37 to 35. Sims flashes to the baseline, draws the foul from John Pelford. Kentucky looked like they were confused as to which defense they were playing in. Pelfrey, 1987. Kentucky Mr. Basketball. Richie Farmer, Kentucky Mr. Basketball. A year later. This is a club not without outstanding talent. But that's what they tell you, is that they don't have any talent on this ball club. <laughs> They have everybody thinking that this is a great surprise that they have a team like this. Let's face it. Rick Pitino is truly an outstanding coach. And in the 90s, one of the great items, you must know how to handle the media. And he is a maestro. They have a heck of a basketball team. I think that they are one of the best five basketball teams in the country. Well, House. O'Neal clears for LSU. Piku running the show for the Tigers with Pew on the bench. Kentucky in the 2-3 zone. I think that's the defense they were trying to get into before and weren't able to do it. Sims off the feet from Hanson. O'Neal commits the foul. It's a push against Pelfrey. And Shaq is aware that he is guilty. He's aware that he's guilty. I don't know that he particularly agrees that he's guilty. 
And Shaq pushes off against Martinez to try to get in position. And Pelfrey, that's a wise man who knows where Shaq is. And Shaq just pushes him a couple of feet. That's a pretty good call. Pelfrey holding on for dear life right there, hoping that when that whistle, hoping the whistle blows before Shaq runs over him all the way and gets to the basket. You remember the days of Virginia when Ralph Sampson and this whole problem about fouling of the big man and, and Terry Holland had to deal with it. One of the real differences between O'Neal and some of the other big guys, the Waltons and the Sampsons that come to my mind, when he's pushed, it's very difficult to move him. Absolutely. He is a big guy. And that's why I think that Dale Brown's got to be careful talking about people following Shaq because if the referees start looking, they're going to see what Shaq's doing in addition to what other people are doing to him. You mean officials are guilty of reverse psychology? Is that what you're telling no, me? No, no, I wouldn't <laughs> say anything like that. We'll be back. Oh, I Down between Kentucky and LSU from 1991, featuring Shaquille O'Neal and Jamal Mashburn, right here on ESPN Classic. You can see Rick Pitino's huddle. He has brought his team away from the LSU faithful a bit so he can better communicate with his club, away from the bench by a few feet. You made the comment that you believe this is perhaps one of the top five teams in the country. How much would it mean to Pitino to continue with this team's growth, almost have them playing like it's March, when in fact they know there is no March in their future this season? Oh, well, of course, that's Rick, what Rick Pitino wants. He's able to get these kids pumped up. They have no postseason, so they've got to play for the regular season. When I say they're one of the best five teams in the country, may, they may not have any guy that stands out as a shining star game in and game out, but they play very, very well together. They're very talented. Talented. They have so many different weapons and things that they can do with those weapons. Mike Hansen with the hoop for LSU to tie the game at 39. The other thing that Patino has done is he's made moves before anyone else since the three-point shot came into effect. No one's used it better. The game has changed, and Patino has made good use of the changes in the collegiate game since re-entering from his days with the Knicks. Grasso, I think, hustled to hurry that shot, trying to make sure that Shaquille didn't get it. Here's the zone again for Kentucky. Ah! Throw for three. And Rick Pitino's in that zone because he's sort of got a very funny lineup out there. Hanson's on the bench. Mashburn's on the bench. They've been a small team for quite a while. Shaquille O'Neal gets the steal. Okay. Over to Hanson. That's a three by Hanson. Forty-five, thirty-nine. Hanson has two threes in the game. And Hanson's hit his last two field goals, and that may be exceedingly important for LSU. And now Boudreaux is going to get called for the hold away from the ball. Martinez is trying to lob the ball inside, and I think it's very hard to lob it over Shaquille O'Neal. He's playing way in the middle of the lane. There's Pew knowing where Hanson is. That's a great jump stop by Hanson and drilling it in the basket. Excellent fast break by LSU. You see the numbers. Kentucky will launch well over 30 in most games that they'll play. LSU shooting 50%. They rely heavily on Hanson for almost all of their... Kentucky averages 25 attempts a game. And they only make 34% of those 25 attempts per game, but I think the constant threat of the three-pointer forces you to defend out there. And for a normal basketball team, that gives an advantage inside. With a shack in there, that advantage is all but gone. And that was something that they used to a great degree of success against Georgia, a team that obviously is more finesse in its low post area. Sims bounces it inside to O'Neal. Draws the foul from Woods. Very little that Shaquille has not done in the first half. Well, Rick Pitino is right now telling the officials that he thinks one of the things that Shaquille is doing is foul. He has been quiet for at least the last two minutes, but remember, he already had 20. But we were 12 minutes deep. It has, he has forced some of Rick Pitino's top front line post players, Mashburn and Hanson, to the bench with foul trouble. He doesn't want Hanson to pick up a third before the end of the half. Same with Mashburn. And you see the Kentucky starters. 
And O'Neill has 20, and the starter's 29 for Kentucky. It's an amazing statistic, but he's an amazing player. LSU's lead is back to six. Two minutes until halftime. O'Neill just not guarding Martinez outside at all. T.J. Pugh picks up the foul. See, now if you're T.J. Pugh, Tim, that's not a very smart play at this point in the basketball game. It doesn't make any difference if Braddy gets by him. What's Braddy going to do with the basketball? He's going to drive by him, and he's got Shaquille O'Neal standing there looking at him. And I think that's what Dale Brown is telling him. LSU on a 9-1 run in the last 145 of the game. Nehemiah Jr. Braddy, a sophomore from Jacksonville, one of the Kentucky walk-ons from the team that went 14 and 14 a year ago. Tremendous leaper. Had a couple of timely three-pointers in that first meeting, a victory at Rupp Arena for Kentucky 93 to 80 earlier in the year. Ooh, that was a dangerous pass, and that's an even worse pass. The turnover problems continue, and Farmer will load up. Richie Farmer has his first three. And Kentucky continues to make LSU pay for the mistakes. Bridge. O'Neal airborne, in trouble, throws up a prayer, fail, Feldhouse comes down with it. That was a tremendous athletic play by Shaquille O'Neal to hold his pivot foot. Braddy. Pelfrey oh. out of bounds to LSU. First eight to ten minutes of the game, frenetic, many turnovers. Kentucky having difficulty. You see coming up at halftime, John Saunders with top 25 scores and highlights. We will have a visit with Joe B. Hall. It's always nice to talk to Joe B. He has a 1978 national championship in his back pocket. The last for Kentucky, and oddly enough, the last loss he had with that team that included Bruce Gibbons, Rick Roby, and company is here in that room. Again, and Jamel then, Martinez may have picked it up. Jamel Martinez did pick it up. O'Neal is going to catch the basketball. Just watch him power into Martinez here. Gets that dribble, and that's where Kentucky needs to help. If Shaquille O'Neal is going to put the ball on the deck to get to the basket, Kentucky's got to get somebody there before that ball comes up off the floor. If it goes down to the floor, it's got to stay there. Had a few bodies on the floor a moment ago, and Mickey Crowley very quickly came over. Here's another look. Now watch when O'Neal gets the ball. There's the dribble. Still nobody coming to help. Feldhouse is standing there worried about Sims. He's got to go and get that basketball before it bounces back up into O'Neal's hand because if O'Neal can use the dribble to get to the basket, then it's really terrifying. That's the only problem tonight so far at the stripe. That's pretty much been his only problem all year. 48-44, LSU's lead is four. Davis in the ball game for Kentucky. As Rick Pitino going a little deeper on the bench, and I think he'd like to go. Much deeper than he'd like to go. It's a foul against Hanson with a count to who? They say well. well. Yep. That's a great pass by Davis. That is a tremendous pass by Davis. And a good cut by Farmer. Davis, that's a great job to bounce it past O'Neal. Shaquille standing out there with his hands up in the air. Davis beats that with the bounce pass. Good catch inside by Farmer. Farmer's a tough-looking kid, but I guess it's easy to look tough when you don't shave and have a black eye. He picked that up in the Georgia game. Said Neville Austin gave it to him in a loose ball situation. I said, was there a foul? He said, no, just incidental contact. <laughs> <laughs> and no foul. It, with his free throw shooting ability, you know he would have collected a couple. That's the time left in the half. Shot clock is off. That is the game clock. Sims is open, and that's the spot. That's what he brings to the table that the Tigers have been missing for four and a half weeks. 
at halftime, LSU's lead is 50. Dale Brown has his club right where he would like them, albeit the turnovers that have been a problem against Quick Rick and his cats. Showdown between Kentucky and LSU from 1991, featuring Shaquille O'Neal and Jamal Mashburn, right here on ESPN Classic. Shaquille O'Neal at seven feet can also do a Houdini routine. That's right. Here is there's a movie Jaws. Think about the movie Jaws. In the bottom left of your screen is the dorsal fin. Now it disappears under the water. Now here it comes. <laughs> Boy, that's a heck of a view right there. How can you lose a guy that's seven feet one and weighs 300 pounds? But boy, he finds it quickly. Yeah, we have taken slam cam to an all new level. Thanks to Shaquille O'Neal. 61-53. Nice play by Hanson, saves an LSU turnover. Remember, O'Neal out of the game because of the third foul, picked up a moment ago. This is a very interesting part of the game for the Tigers. They will need help from Singleton and Hanson. There's the turnover inside. And again, an unforced error inside for LSU. Very frustrating trip down the court for Singleton. He was matched up inside against Woods, trying to get his teammates' attention. Couldn't do it. And when he did get the basketball, it slipped out of his hand. And I see Kentucky with Mashburn out of the game, is, or with Mashburn in the game, and O'Neal out tries to attack inside, but good defense by Hammond. Hugh finds Hanson who moves inside and uses the glass. Hammett puts it on the floor, lost out of bounds to Kentucky, and Dale Brown wanted a foul. Big guy dribbling the ball inside, and that's usually a mistake. Dale Brown's not doing a swimming stroke there. I think he's asking for an over and back call. Look for or both an over the back <laughs> call. Look for both of these coaches to perhaps be a bit more animated as we get closer to crunch time. Will she feel the same? Kevin Court. Time now for a bit of classic Did You Know? Did you know that during the 1990-91 season, Rick Pitino had three assistants who would later become head coaches at major universities? It's true. They were Tubby Smith, Herb Sendak, and Billy Donovan. Smith would later win a national championship as the head coach of the Kentucky Wildcats, while Donovan guided Florida to a berth in the finals in 2000. For now, we take you back to the action. It's Kentucky and LSU from 1991. You see it right here and right now on ESPN Classic. John Griggs has just done a tremendous defensive job against John Pelfrey. Pelfrey, the leading scorer for the Wildcats, just hasn't been a big factor offensively in this game. This is a three-on-two for Sean Griggs. He backs in for the solo and draws the foul from Mashburn. He has three. That could be an equalizer for Brown with Shaquille O'Neal sitting down with three. And again, Patino goes to the bench and Reggie Hansen to come in. Scoreboard showing that's Mashburn's fourth foul. Yes, it is. It certainly is. That would mean that Mashburn leaves the game with four rather than three. This is a nice move by Griggs to attack Mashburn. He's a little bit quicker than Mashburn and takes it into the basket. Rick Pitino's question is, where's the foul? And he's really barking at the officials. Problems at the stripe for LSU continue. Their lead is eight. Oh, you've got to stop that guy with the basketball. Great block. Briggs with the outlet to Singleton. Missed the chipping. The assembly center, the Maravich House, was ready to erupt. And it still may be. Singleton comes back again and draws the foul. For Dale Brown and his LSU ball club, I think that he senses that this is the time that they'd better put Kentucky away. The Wildcats continue to shoot the ball poorly. That's now four fouls against Hanson. That foul was against Hanson. 
Here's Hanson with the shot. Notice here on this replay, Kentucky does not do a good job getting back down the court. A lot of that has to do with the fact that Singleton really pushes it hard, but that foul was called against Hanson. Hanson was four. Ashburn was four. Kentucky in deep, deep foul trouble. If you're not running out of bodies, you're at least running out of bulk. And that is a definite problem anytime you match up with O'Neal inside. Shaquille still sitting down, and Brown can afford to keep him there, largely because of Hanson's situation, as well as Mashburn's. Plus, you also add in the factor, Tim, that Pelfrey is not having a very good game offensively, that Hanson and Pugh have done a nice job taking Woods out of the game offensively. It's amazing that Kentucky's within nine points. It really is. Jamel Martinez has come in. There's Pelfrey. Again, he just can't buy it tonight from three-point line. Pico goes right into the Wildcat bench. The Tigers reclaim it. And the fans love that. Dale Brown insists that John Pico is the type of tough competitor he wants coming off the bench in his backcourt. He nearly two, took Rick Patino out. Patino showing some pretty good quickness over there for a 38-year-old. And now Piku steps on the line. Kentucky, with that pressure, forces another turnover. Can you handle the trap? Young guards will always be in that situation when going up against a Patino coach club. Now that's 17 turnovers for the ball game for LSU, but only their second in the second half. We've played six and a half minutes. Farmer, Pelfrey inside to follow. 62-55. O'Neal has been on the bench for three minutes. That's a block. Count it. Harold Boudreau. Martinez picks it up. Martinez trying to get himself set. Never really gets set in there. That's now four fouls against Martinez. And Rick Patino's running out of options. This is what happens because of O'Neal. And remember, Hanson, Mashburn, and Martinez picked up their fourth with O'Neal on the bench. Well, not only is it the O'Neal factor, Tim, but LSU has been doing such a nice job getting out on the fast break that it's the big guys who are down sort of playing the goalie, if you will, in that break situation. And they've committed some fouls trying to stop the guys coming down the court. If Dale Brown's team is going to make the march in March, as they have in the past, Harold Boudreau is one of those players that could improve in the month of February. There he is on the defensive end. If he becomes a complete player on both ends of the floor, LSU becomes lethal. In the first ball game between these two teams, Kentucky made 17 three-pointers. That's a push off the ball. Martinez is gone. Off the ball against Hammock. Clearly a foul. Kentucky will get the timeout. No, I don't think they're not going to take a timeout. Patino's just got some time. He's got a minute to put somebody in the ballgame. Nobody's called a timeout here. Nobody's called a timeout. Kentucky just has some time to get a player in the ballgame. <laughs> and they're taking that time. Rick Pitino takes that time to bring his team over as he substitutes Davis back into the ballgame. So there's no timeout there. Boy, it certainly appeared that both of them were going to the pine, but you're absolutely right. Just to the left of the basket as we look at it. Hammock backing in. Martinez clearly pushing on him. You know, Martinez was slight. Davis is no bulk monster in there. No, he's not. Hanson. Yes, and a foul on Davis. Dale definitely sensed that this could be the killer punch. He may be right. They're up 12. And O'Neal still on the bench. Hammock does a nice job. That's a pass that he's not going to catch, and rather than give it up for a turnover, he tries to tap it to a teammate. That's a great job. 68-55, LSU by 13, and this lead is extended by seven points with O'Neal, who had literally been the LSU offense in the first half, on the bench in the second half. 
Farmer doing a great job moving without the basketball. Piku hanging on, and Piku is going to get called for the foul. Tim, Kentucky does not possess great size, and when you don't possess great size, playing a team like LSU that has the big guy in the middle, the three-point shot is really the equalizer. Kentucky has not been able to make the three-pointer. There's another fine defensive by Boudreaux. One of the reasons for the three-point difficulty is Pelfrey just hasn't been able to get the ball. Patino gets the timeout, and listen to these Cajuns. between Kentucky and LSU from 1991 featuring Shaquille O'Neal and Jamal Mashburn right here on ESPN Classic. Patino really has some major adjustments he has to make right now because his players that mean so much to him, Hanson and Mashburn in foul difficulty and Reggie Hanson has come back into the game. You see the, the numbers in the second half. The Tigers on a tear with O'Neal on the bench. Farmer, Woods now to try for three, and he drops it through. Tim, prior to that shot, Kentucky shooting 18 of 62 for the game. There's a turnover. That's what kept Kentucky in the ball game in the first half. That's what LSU has not done in the second half. And if LSU is going to turn the ball over, you've got to expect that Kentucky is going to heat up here pretty soon. They won't stop launching, that's for sure. Belfry finds a seam. Well, that was easy. That's a four-point trip, and they're only down by ten. Check that, a five-point trip. And Shaquille O'Neal gets up off the bench and is coming back in the game. Anytime somebody's going to drive right to the basket and lay it in, Dale Brown knows it's time for the big gap. Farmer picks up the foul. That's his third. Shaq back into the game, so he gets four and a half minutes for a blow, leaves the game, up six, comes back into the game, up ten. So even with the turnovers, things going the way Dale Brown would like. Gerd Hammock, quietly, not only a cult figure, but a real contributor here in Baton Rouge. Well, it's always a pleasure, if you're a guy who's playing off the bench, to know that you're making a contribution to the ball club. And this kid certainly has but this entire season. And he's going to get a well-deserved hand as he gets out of the ball game. 72 to 60. Man-to-man -man defense by LSU. Nice cutter inside the belt. He has 10 in the game. Had a season-high 27 in the first meeting, as Dan documented. He'll have to start launching from three before this one's over. Hanson will pop. Just on the line. 74-62. Mike Hanson now getting closer to his average. He has 17. Boudreau now doing the work. There's a five-second count as Woods dribbles the ball for too long with Hanson guarding him. I say, and Boudreaux is now giving Griggs a breath, a breather, and he's doing a great job against Pelfrey as well. Always helps to trigger the ball inbounds when you can throw it up to O'Neill. And here comes the trap. Where's this one going? <laughs> what a save by Hanson. I thought that ball was down the tunnel. O'Neill inside. Pelfrey with a rejection. Recovered by Hanson. Right back to Shaq. Boudreaux keeping it alive, and Reggie Hansen clears. Pelfrey actually got a piece of both of those, and Farmer dribbled it off his leg. Patino looks at Richie and says, why? Just bring it back out, and let's run the show. As we mentioned in the first tab, for those of you just joining us, Patino ill today. Not as animated in the first half, but obviously trailing by 12. Rick, uh, a lot more in it. We we were making fun of the situation with Joe. I asked him when was the last time he was ill before a game. Joe B. Hall said, the first time I knew I was taking over for Adolph Rupp. <laughs> I got a little sick to my stomach. Wood shot, not there, controlled by T.J. Pugh. 
Hansen really did a nice job moving his feet against Woods on that particular occasion. Hugh clutches in the air and puts it in for two. LSU by 14 halfway through the second half. Hansen, nice drop step. Goes back for the follow, rejected by O'Neill. That's his fifth block of the game. Well, you figure you're going to get away with one of those against O'Neill, but when you try the second time, the big guy's lurking around somewhere. Hansen moves in. That's a real good defensive play by Boudreaux to force the first miss, and then O'Neill sneaks in on the second one. Pelfrey. Boy, it's just not going down for him. Grasso follows. Clear to Pew. Kentucky's gone cold. Brasso commits the foul. It was Brasso, by the way, a year ago, and Maurice Williamson, who is sitting out with some academic difficulty, that created the controversy on the floor that eventually led to the Brown-Patino confrontation, January 13th of 1990, that had been so well documented last year and, of course, preceding this game. Two players that got tangled up, and both Brown and Patino have been very apologetic about their actions in the aftermath of that. But Brasso, one of those tough kids, Maurice Williamson, cut from that same cloth, and that will happen in a rivalry like this. Interestingly, Rick Patino was recruited by Dale Brown when Dale was an assistant at Utah State. Rick had already made a commitment to Massachusetts, but he told us that uh, in those days there was no commitment, no letter of intent. So Dale had every right to talk to him, almost convinced him to go to Utah. And when you're from the Bronx and you're thinking about going to Utah, I said, Queens, and you're thinking about going to Utah, he's a pretty good recruiter. <laughs> well, when you think about it, the Bronx or Queens, <laughs> it wouldn't matter, would it? <laughs> Heck, even if you're from New Jersey. Yeah, Utah would Utah would be different if you're from Connecticut. <laughs> Boudreaux, boy, has he been a spark off the Tiger bench. LSU by 17, their largest lead. Foul against Boudreaux as Woods is trying to get penetration. Kentucky. You don't sense any desperation on the part of the Wildcats yet. The style that they play, and LSU certainly isn't going to slow down any. This 17-point lead is one that Rick Pitino's club can overcome if the ball will just start going in the basket. Boudreaux has four fouls. He has 15 points in the game. It's tough enough to win on the road in this league, but it's awful hard to do if you shoot under 30%. <laughs> well, Pelfrey won't stop shooting, but it won't start dropping as the second half continues for him. LSU only led by four at halftime. Pelfrey 0 for 8. <laughs> Dribbled right off his foot and went right into the hands of Singleton. Nice move by Burnell. As Grasso grasping it air. 81-62. Ashburn in the game with four. O'Neal looks to Solo. Back to Shaquille and Brasso knocks it away. Good hustle by Brasso to break up that play. Illusions of that break he ran against Arizona, dancing through the heads of the fans here in Baton Rouge, only to have Brasso knock it away. In many respects, Dan, LSU, as we mentioned, losing three of their last four, struggling a bit. But you look back at this team picked third in the SEC after the Arizona win at home and the Alabama win on the road, which we had. The expectations grew greatly from preseason, didn't they? Boy, they sure did. And I think there's a, you know, a big factor in this ball game is Hansen, who's only had eight points in the last two games total, has 17 tonight. And that makes LSU a much better team when they get that outside threat to go along with O'Neal. Woods penetrates past Pew and claws the Wildcats back to within 17. Still a long way to go, eight minutes remaining. Boudreaux has been warm all night from there. He won't stop. But Cecilia High School, a parade All-American out of high school, forgotten because of the Prop 48 casualty that he was. He brings a lot more to the offensive arsenal. And LSU's lead is 19. It's a career high. 
for Boudreaux. Showdown between Kentucky and LSU from 1991, featuring Shaquille O'Neal and Jamal Mashburn, right here on ESPN Classic. Harold Boudreau, what a coming out party for this young man. What a ball game he's having. He has been deadly on the jump shot. You can see the jumper right there. He's done a very fine defensive job against Pelfrey. And here the long cross court pass spots up for that jumper and drills it. 17 points for Boudreau. And he's open again over in the corner, but Shaquille didn't see him. He's played most of the second half. Griggs, the defensive specialist, is sitting while Boudreaux has played on both ends of the floor. Offensive foul against Singleton as he throws his elbow out and gets Pelfrey. That's a tough matchup for Pelfrey down inside against Vernell Singleton. And it's a good idea by LSU to attack in that particular area. Vernell is one of those players as well, Dan. You cannot measure what he means to LSU simply by the numbers he brings offensively. And his numbers offensively are pretty good. Hansen misses a three. Mashburn pops outside and O'Neill with a rejection. That's his sixth rejection of the game. Woods penetrates. Oh, he just threw that ball up there. Mashburn between the legs to Braddy. O'Neill picks up the foul, his fourth. One of the items that, as the game has progressed, you slowly begin to notice is they, Woods can only really penetrate. They're, they're not thinking he's a threat outside. Well, he's penetrating, and you can obviously see why Kentucky's shooting less than 30%. It's just very hard to get your shot off when you're worried about O'Neal being around. That time, that was just a throw. That wasn't a shot by Woods. There are going to be nights when Patino's system does not work simply because the three points don't come. But when they do come, when you trade two for three, usually you can throw a few knockout punches at people. Well, the thing that Rick Patino and his team have been able to do so far is they've had nights where one guy or two guys aren't hitting the shots, but somebody, either coming off the bench or one of the fellows who starts the game, somebody's having a good offensive night. As Boudreaux drives to the basket, that simply hasn't been the case for Kentucky tonight. Nobody's been able to get it going offensively. Boudreaux has 19, and that's the oh, lead that's, for that's, LSU. That's a bad shot right there by Mashburn. A little frustration setting in for the Wildcats right now. Get so excited that O'Neal's not in the game, you figure you can get the shot off. Hammock gets it back with Mashburn on his hip. Just split the double team, power move right there. Pelfrey, just not falling for him. Woods, hacked by Hammett. You don't think Hammett learned that move while defending Shaquille O'Neal a time or two? Well, of course, it's got to be an advantage playing against Shaq in practice every day. Of course, in practice, you're not going to get this shot against O'Neal. But right there, he splits the double team, does a nice job with the dribble, dribbles before the double team comes, and then with the pivot, gets the ball up on the board. O'Neal sitting on the bench with a very capable substitute in the ballgame. We've talked about Shaquille O'Neal's dad, Philip Harrison, being a sergeant in San Antonio, Texas. Kurt Hammock is one of four other LSU players who have fathers that have military background. Kurt Hammock's dad is in the military police in Holland. That'll help your discipline on a club when you've got six guys whose dads are in the military. A lot of yes or no sirs to well, coach. You, you hope so. You bet. Sims pops free. 67 and the Tiger blowout appears to be continuing. Just under six minutes remaining. Woods with the left hand. Hanson over Hammock. Feldhouse will try. The foul against Lanier Burns. Kentucky continues to get an awful lot of offensive rebounds, but they're not getting any scoring production out of it. Kentucky just has shot the ball very poorly tonight, and you have to credit some real fine LSU defense with that. 
I mean, Kentucky's missed some open shots, but LSU has defended against Kentucky very well. And one of the keys against Kentucky, if you don't turn the ball over, Kentucky isn't going to get a lot of easy opportunities. And in this second half, that's really been the story. LSU turned it over 15 times in the first half. They've only turned it over four times in the second half. Kentucky hung in the game, scoring off turnovers in the first half. They haven't been able to do it here in the second. 89-69, 5.45 remaining. And there's nothing that helps your confidence playing against the team trying to pressure in a 20-point lead. Hammett has this one taken away by Mashburn, and it's actually a tie ball with the arrow to LSU, so the Tigers will hold on. Let's pound it out for your... Welcome back, everybody. I'm Kevin Cork. What was all the rage back in 1991? Well, for starters, Silence of the Lambs won the Academy Award for Best Picture. Anthony Hopkins and Jodie Foster took home Best Actor and Best Actress, respectively, for their work in that film. On the airways, two diverse songs top the charts. Gonna Make You Sweat by CNC Music Factory. You remember that, don't you? And More Than Words by hard rock act Extreme. And on TV, millions tuned in to Beverly Hills 90210 to follow the exploits of Brenda, Dylan, and the gang. Enough of that stuff. Let's get you back to the action, shall we? It's Kentucky and LSU from 1991. It continues here on ESPN Classic. Jamal Mashburn, unlike some players that you find from New York City, a rather quiet guy, very humble, <laughs> unlike a Kenny Anderson who's very confident and has a great deal of self-esteem. I mean that in a positive way. There you see the turnover is five and a half. What a difference a half makes for LSU, Dan. Well, that's turnover number six for LSU in this half as Piku gets called for the offensive foul. But you're right. The only reason Kentucky hung in the basketball game in the first half is because they were able to create turnovers and turn them into points. And when Dale Brown's squad cut that source of Kentucky's offense off in the second half, and the Wildcats shooting woes continued, they gradually dropped further and further out of this ball game. Mashburn looking inside for Hanson away by Hammock. Hanson got away with that first dribble, but the second Hammock got it. Brown wants some tempo, and he wants to utilize clock. An emphasis on protecting the ball. And once again, guys from LSU must think the court's a little wider than it really is. That's about the third or fourth time tonight that they've stepped on that sideline over there. Don't forget Sports Center, Bob Lee and Dan Patrick, with the aforementioned stories that they'll be following immediately following our game. stop and the finger roll to bring the Wildcats under 20. 4.35 and counting. Kentucky's really got to get some of those turnovers now if they're going to trap in this situation and you don't steal the ball, which they do. Boy, Burns doing a nice job running back on the fast break. That's a nasty collision right there, but Burns stopped the easy layup. Feldhaus goes right into the post with Lanier Burns, and they're getting his third. If you're going to trap, you're going to have to create the steal. Here comes Kentucky. Yeah, you can see four on ones, but Burns just lopes into the picture right there. A well-padded post, which is a good thing for both of those gentlemen. Here comes Burns running on. Feldhaus is going to come right at you. Look out. His nickname is House. He came right into your house there. Aaron at the line. The difference in the game at Rupp Arena a few weeks ago and this game, in essence, the three-point shot. 17 connected by Kentucky in that 13-point win over LSU. Actually a game much closer than the score might have indicated. LSU down 17 at one point with O'Neal picking up a technical foul the second half they clawed it within two with three and a half minutes left Kentucky hits three straight threes the game is over 
Kentucky just hasn't been able, as you say, Tim, to score from three-point line. They've only got five. They had five in the first half. There's the ball out of bounds again. LSU stepping on the line. I don't think Kentucky scored from three-point range in the second half. Yeah. So they've got five for the game. Actually, Mashburn got one to start the That's second right. Half. That's right. Okay. So they've got six. Mashburn thinking about it. Off the back iron, Hugh collects it. LSU may have this 16-point lead, but there still could be some danger signals for Dale Brown to deal with in protecting the ball. Although Shaquille O'Neal is can rectify a lot of problems if you hold on to it long enough. Well, I'll tell you what, if he catches the ball seven feet from the basket, you've got to do everything you can to keep him out there. Mashburn finally does hit the three. 91-76. 340 remaining. Briggs back in the game. Pugh in the air, finds single twos fouled by Hanson, and that's his fifth. Yes. Reggie, Reggie Hanson is the leader of this team, and he's leaving the game. And the point in this game where both he and Mashburn picked up the fourth, Brown seized the moment with his club, and they got the big lead, and that pretty much is the story of this game. Well, one of the things that happens for Kentucky if you lose your inside threat, and I think that's what happens when Hanson and Mashburn are on the bench, then it makes it easier for the defense to get out and guard the three-point shot because they don't have that inside threat to worry about. No points in the second half for Reggie Hanson. Spent a lot of time on the bench in foul trouble. And this is a guy that they look to as a leader. Reggie Hanson is... You talk about leadership. Here's a guy that's pretty much your uh, your coach on your club. I mean, he's in charge of making sure that the Wildcats handle the curfew, that they get in before 12 o'clock. Hanson's in charge of that? Yeah, he reports to Patino. A spy. A proctor. <laughs> <laughs> Out of bounds to LSU. 3.15 remaining. Reggie Hansen will make curfew tonight. His team is down by 17. Showdown between Kentucky and LSU from 1991, featuring Shaquille O'Neal and Jamal Mashburn, right here on ESPN Classic. 93 to 78. Dale Brown getting the timeout quickly. Dan, you always look at the game, I think, uniquely from a player's perspective, and you wonder, Dale Brown, the last two trips down the floor, has asked his team to please control the basketball, use some clock. We've got a lead. Why make this pass? Well, because you've been pumped up for a couple of days to play against a team that's a big rival and ahead of you in the conference standings. You've got a big lead. As the kids, they really want to drive them into the ground. So Dale Brown, he may have asked before, but I guarantee you, he did more than ask at that timeout. He probably threatened their lives. <laughs> In a manner of speaking, of course. <laughs> Out of bounds, it goes back to the Tigers. Kentucky with some pretty good pressure on the inbounds. Boy, that's just a nice dribble move by Pugh. Brasso just not quick enough to cut him off. O'Neal. His home court average. Brasso hacked by T.J. Pugh. Well, of course, the other thing you don't want to do at this stage of the game is commit a foul. We should mention about T.J. Pugh. He's one of those guys that uh, you pick up late out of Garden City Junior College. Dale Brown had really hoped that he could have signed Antonio Lang, who went to Duke, and Ed O'Bannon who obviously opted for UNLV and then later went to UCLA prior to that, that injury. When he couldn't come up with either, he knew he needed a guard. He pushed the ball up the floor, and he came up with a T.J. Pugh. And in junior college, many times you can find some guys that can contribute for you, bring some quickness to the floor. Darrell Joe, a player a few years ago that played for him, cut from that same mold. Fans wanted a foul. Now they get one right there. Feldhaus commits it. His second. Well, if you're Kentucky, what you're left with at this point in the ballgame is not really very much in the way of options. 
But you've got to go for the immediate turnover, and if you don't get it, then you're committing the foul. And Pugh, a 65% free throw shooter. And again for Kentucky, even if he misses the free throws, and of course they're already past the 10 limit, so he's going to get two right here. Even if he misses it, you've got to come down and score from three-point range, and that has been a major difficulty for Kentucky tonight. Another reason why, and I know that it's pushing 11.40 Eastern time on the East Coast. If you're looking for these games to be shortened because of the two-foul mandate after the 10th team foul, forget about it. It just won't happen. Mashburn into the lane, drawing the foul from Singleton. That will be five on Vernell Singleton. This young guy from Natchez, Mississippi, if you're looking for a team leader outside of Shaquille O'Neal, this guy is it. He gets seven points, but again, you cannot measure what he brings to the team just in the point production on the offensive end. He's got that band-aid on. It's going in a different direction. Perpendicular. Yeah. Team. Doesn't have it horizontal. Perpendicular was the floor, not well, horizontal. When you've, when you've lost floor. three out of your last four, you got to change something. Got to make you a change. change something. Absolutely. <laughs> Changing clothing doesn't work. You change your band-aid. Well, one of the things that's helped LSU is changing in these white uniforms here tonight. Doesn't hurt, does it? 97-82. Under two minutes left. There he is dribbling the ball in. Oh! The trajectory on that shot. Low grazing the front iron and dunking through. 14 of 17 from the floor for Shaquille O'Neal. He hasn't been shooting three-pointers, Tim. Now, I only remember one turnaround jump shot. The rest of them going to the hoop with authority. Well, we've talked a lot about how when Shaquille catches the ball 10 feet from the basket, it'd be a good idea to keep him there. That ball actually slid off the heel of his hand into the basket. You know you're having a good shooting night when that happens. Not only did it graze the iron, it touched the glass. Look at the numbers. Not quite, not quite the triple-double, but almost. Well, the scary thing about that, Tim, is those numbers are pretty much routine for Shaquille O'Neal. Remember, he comes into the ball game averaging 28 points, 15 rebounds, and five block shots a game. So he's only a little above average tonight, and that's frightening. It's the numbers from Boudreaux, the numbers from Hanson that haven't been there of late. They have gotten them tonight, hence the 19-point Tiger lead. Helfrey on the offensive glass. But you can't have a one-man team. And even though O'Neal averages 28 points and 15 rebounds, he can't beat anybody all by himself. And LSU's really gotten contributions from a lot of people. Not a pretty significant contribution from T.J. Pugh. T.J. Pugh, who's going to get a chance to go to the free throw line again. Many of the crowd, many here in the crowd are making their way out. We will just continue to call this one. T.J. Pugh at the line. Three, 84 LSU by 19. That's the way it's gone for Kentucky. LSU, of course, not worried at all about any penetration inside, really guarding the three-point line. Kentucky throwing it out of bounds. Long faces on the Kentucky sideline. Bruised and battered in blue. Well, it has been a long night for the Wildcats. Danny Moskovitz in the game. Brzezewski. Richard Brzezewski, the young man from North Dakota. Just coming into the game, gets his first two. LSU's lead out to 21. So, he has 
13 in the game. Kentucky keeping that pressure on. Feldhaus still working hard out there. Patino won't stop coaching. Brown wants more. This is a win that he desperately needed to carry his team throughout the second half of the SEC season. Sims trying to keep it alive, and Pelfrey comes down with it. Well, it's a win that actually brings Kentucky back toward the pack. They had a two-game lead. That lead is going to go down to one in the loss column now. Briggs takes it in. Again, remember, Kentucky not eligible for the regular season crown, although playing the regular season. But anyone that wins the SEC needs a victory over Kentucky in their own minds if they are the real champion of the SEC. Dale Brown gets the win over Rick Pitino and the Wildcats 107 to 88. For Dan Bonner, Tim Brando saying so long from Baton Rouge. The LSU fans are happy in purple and gold. They have the win tonight. We'll see you next week.